Welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to Pure Dog Talks Live at Five. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and I am super excited to have you all joining us tonight. We are celebrating the advent of 2024 with a conversation about the sort of 12 step program I wrote a while back 12 steps to a happier you in the dog world. So while everybody's hopping on, we've got a couple items for the good of the order, as usual. In case you haven't heard, we launched last summer a really, really cool opportunity to access the archives. And I've done all the searching and the hunting and the pecking for you. So for the low, low introductory price of only a buck ninety nine, which I have to tell you, it's been six months. That, that price might be going up. So you guys ought to hop on it. You can download an entire album on topics like breeding and whelping hands on, the interviews with legends in our sport, veterinary voice, owner handlers, love the breeds, and a whole bunch more. And remember, there's only the most recent 200 episodes out of 600 total that are available to you on your podcast app. And so unless you want to do the keyword searching yourself, this is a great way to get access to a lot of really good material. As always, our success is your success. If you haven't yet, please do check out our exclusive patrons group. Your added perk for the patrons is pure pep talk. It's a weekly SMS text message that has an upbeat, fun, sort of educational tidbit. You can sign up for the patrons group, including the pep talk messages, for as little as 10 bucks a month. I mean, you know, come on. That's the price of a coffee drink at your favorite stand. And that's for a month. It's a whole lot more for a whole lot less than you can get anywhere else. But, of course, always remember, more support gets you more access. So, there's that too. Bottom line, your passion is our purpose. Check it all out on the website at puredogtalk.com. Now, I, here's the thing about it, you guys. I don't know about you all, but uh, this this holiday season has has not been one of my most jovial. I just I haven't had the vibe. And I tried, man, I tried. All my magic spells were for naught trying to maintain a positive attitude, it's just been, at best, modestly successful. And we all know there's a lot going on, and it's been a rough couple of years. The global psyche is literally bruised and battered. So what we all needed is a 12-step program for happiness. And fortunately, I have just the thing. I wrote this back in, actually in 2015, if you'd believe it, um, for the now defunct online magazine that was called Pest and Show Daily. Uh, these are steps that are designed to apply to our dog event world specifically, but you know what? You can generalize this to daily life pretty easily. Um, just be nice is is a big part of the three simple rules that we're going to take away from this get off your bleeping phone <laughs> and learn some new things okay uh 12 steps to a happier you and the dog fancy and remember this is a live at five this is an interactive opportunity so we encourage you to drop in with your thoughts, your comments, your questions. Natalie will put them up here for me to see and we can talk about it. All right, so here we go. 12 steps, broke this down in a monthly calendar way, it seemed easier. So we're gonna start with January, that's this month. We've got dog shows kicking off, right? We've got Palm Springs here on the West Coast. There's shows in uh, Spaniel Club and Florida and Washington, all these shows coming up. So here's our first goal. And I promise you, 
this will help make your life happier. Say congratulations to the winner. <laughs> or thank you to the people who congratulate you. Yeah. Yeah. Every single time. Yes. Even when the person that won is your most bitter enemy. Yeah. Actually, especially then. Okay. This is real. This is serious. This is something that we talk about a lot. People can be joy stealers, right? The idea that you didn't win and so you're mad and you think you should have won. And congratulations, you just stock off. You got to remember, the person that won is just as happy as you would have been if it was you. And it's not your job to be a stealer of someone else's happiness. That's just not, it's not your thing. The 12 step program, by the way, PS is available. Natalie has done some wondrous magical tech thing. And so if you message puredogtalk.com, just go on the Facebook page go on the Pure Dog Talk Facebook page and, and send us a message that says 12 steps, please. Just here on the Facebook page, you will get this infographic that is cute and fun and you can print it out and hang it on your grooming shop or your refrigerator or wherever it makes you happy. Okay, January, every dog show, whether you're in, in Washington or California or Florida or Tennessee or New York, you're going to say congratulations to the person that won the class, that won the breed, that won the group, no matter what. And you're going to mean it, guys. Because for them, it's a big deal. Just like it would be if it was you. So, sincerity in our congratulations. And don't be so full of yourself that you win and someone says thank you, or says congratulations, that you forget to say thank you. Because that's rude. And we're our job here is to do better. So say thank you, say congratulations. That's where we're going to start the year. We're going to do it at every dog show, every day, every weekend in the month of January. Give it a shot. I promise it will make your life happier. Okay. So now we're going to move on. That's the first step. Say congratulations, say thank you. In February, this is a big one. This is a really fun one. It used to be we had the garden in February and we could do do this at, at the garden, but we can't do it. So we're going to find a show in February that you're going to, and you're going to watch one breed other than your own from start to finish at every single dog show you attend. Best if you can do it every day of every dog show you attend, but even if you can't, find one. Watch one breed. Watch the judging. Watch the handlers. See if you can figure out what they're looking for. See if you can understand the breed. We're going to get to reading the breed standard in a little bit, but think about that. Maybe read the breed standard of the breed that you're watching in the ring. Um, this is an, an exceptionally great opportunity to watch the other dog handlers, to see, you know, why did they move that foot that way? Why did they hold the collar this way while they moved? What is it that this person is doing that I could take and apply to my own? What is it about bulldogs that I completely do not understand? <laughs> or, you know, whatever your breed is that you're watching. And ask there and, and strike up a conversation. Who knows? Maybe you're going to find somebody new to, uh, to be friends with. And I think that that is on the list as well. Finding friends outside of our breeds is is a thing that will give us a lot of joy and and sometimes a little less intense competition makes for an opportunity for a stronger friendship um, or just a new friendship. Okay. Questions? Anybody? Questions? All right. <clears throat> We're going to go back over these. So hope you guys are paying attention here. In March, so we've now said congratulations, thank you every time we've been in the ring. We've watched a breed other than our very own from start to finish. Pick a breed that has an entry, by the way. Don't pick one with five dogs. See if you can pick 
whatever breed has a big entry at the show, say there's Frenchies or say there's Goldens, and go sit and watch it. Whole thing from six to nine dogs to best breed. All right. So now we're in March. We're going to do one of my most favorite things. We are going to instill and enforce the first to look at their phone during dinner pays for everyone. <laughs> it's real. Every time you go out to eat, whether you're at the dog show, whether you're with coworkers, whether you're with family, um, this doesn't just, this particularly does not just apply to the dog show. Experience the miracle of direct human interaction. And I wrote this one, it was probably right after I had been out to dinner. I had a particular group of, of friends I was hanging out with at the time. And, and they're great guys. And I really enjoyed them. And we had a lot of fun. And we enjoyed going to nice dinners. And literally, there was no conversation at the table. It was taking pictures of the food or taking selfies of themselves and posting them to social media. And that was it. And, and texting each other across the table. Okay, y'all, that's messed up. <laughs> and, and we see an awful lot these days about how terrible dog shows are and how mean dog show people are and da, 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 da. I promise you it didn't used to be this way before uh, social media. I've been doing this a long time. I went to my first dog shows in the, in the eighties, the heyday, the golden era, as they say. Um, and you know, we hung out with people and we talked to people that used to happen. And, um, I think one of the things, if I was going to do anything that to change this list that I would add is just <laughs> delete Facebook, just be done with it. It's not doing you any good. All it's doing is making your life miserable. Um, Dog book is not, I mean, here we are on, on dog book <laughs> on a Facebook live. So hard for me to say, but uh, truly and honestly, I think that it causes so much more harm than good uh, most of the time, but most importantly, don't do it during dinner. How's that? Okay. So now we're to April. We have said congratulations to the winner and thank you to the people who congratulated us. We've watched a new breed. Um, we've watched it from start to finish. We have put down our phones during dinner and, and, you know, be, be hard ass about it, right? Like somebody picks up their phone cause it's dinging. They just bought dinner. So try it out. Bet it works. Okay. April seek out, go out of your way to find a club official president of the club, the show chair, I don't care, some show official, chief ring steward, the hospitality chair, whoever it is, at each dog show you go to, every single one of them, and thank them personally for their hard work, compliment them on a specific piece of the show that you particularly liked. Resist with all of your might. <laughs> Resist the urge to complain about anything. Remember, you guys, the only reason we even have dog shows or any kind of dog event. P.S. This doesn't just apply in confirmation. This applies in all of the events. The only reason we have these events is because of volunteers. You guys know what volunteer means. It means they're not getting paid for this. And, and I promise you there is not enough money to put up with some of the guff that they have to take. So don't be that person. Be the person that's happy that you have a dog show to go to and, and that the ring stewards were nice, um, that the judges were competent, <laughs> you know, any of those things, find something pretty flowers. All right. If you have a complaint, save it up. You can write a note about it afterwards if it means that much. All right. Okay. So we thank and we congratulate. We watch new breeds so we can learn about them. We put down our bleeping phones and we find somebody to thank at the dog show. Okay. 
this is a very positive feel, isn't it? Right? This feels very uh, nice. Yeah, nice. You can do it. I promise you can do it. And and I get it. There are days <laughs> the nice the nice misses me too. I I assure you. But I can also assure you that the more we focus on these steps, um, the easier it is to focus on the nice. Because just like anything, when you're having a hard time, if you focus on the positive, if you focus on the nice, the bad's still there, but the bad's there if you focus on it or not. But the nice and the kind and the good are hard to find if you don't pay attention to them. So in May, we are going to do what we have been thanking other people for doing up till now. We're going to volunteer. Volunteer to help at one dog show, one event that is the event that you attend. Even if it's just, you know, an hour of ring stewarding, helping with cleanup or setup, judging a fun match. I don't know, restock the candy dishes, pick up somebody else's dog poopy, right? Do one thing for a club that's going out of its way to give you an event for no better reason that that you can do it. And and that's that's worth doing. And the club will appreciate you and you will find that you appreciate what they're doing more when you understand how much effort goes into the volunteer work to put on the event for you. Okay? All right. Thanks. Congratulations. Learning more. Putting down the bleeping phone, right? Uh, seeking out a, a club official to, to compliment them on their show. And now you're going to volunteer to help out just a little bit at one dog show. Okay. Just for one dog show in the month of May. You can do it. All right. Now, next, in June... This is always one of my favorites. Help somebody new. It could be as simple as helping somebody put on an armband. You've got it on the right arm and it needs to be on the left arm. Holding their dog while they flub around with the rubber band and the armband because they've never done it before. Because you've been there too. Maybe you see a promising kid with a new puppy and they show up and they would welcome five minutes of kind. I mean, be kind. We don't have to be didactic about this. We don't have to be telling them how stupid they are that they don't already know what it took you 15 years to learn. Constructive, kind and constructive direction. People appreciate that. It's important here that we understand the concept of helping. <laughs> Focusing on the positive. Just be nice. Wait, wait. Nice? Kind? We heard those words before, right? Mm. Tell somebody they can follow your lead. Hold a door open. I mean, this is really, <laughs> this is really, really um, low-hanging fruit, y'all. <laughs> it's not like I'm asking you to turn into a Nobel laureate here. Just be nice. Um... So just checking in here for a minute, Liz says that she started helping with education besides working at the club show. That's excellent. I love that. Oops. <laughs> um, yeah, don't be the person that gets caught on a hot mic. That's bad. Um, don't worry, Robin. It's We're not that far into it. You're not too late. It's all right. Um, yeah, Liz, it's um, 2013. I mean... Dog shows are dog shows, right? But I promise you, for those of us who have been doing it for a long time, we see the difference. And um, I know I resisted social media for years and finally was drug kind of kicking and screaming. And I've, I, you know, I have found it to be useful, but I also try very hard to limit um, its impact on my life, I guess for lack of a better way of saying it. So, all right, you guys, don't forget, if you have 
stories or ideas or thoughts or questions on any of this, by all means, drop them in the comments, okay? All right, so here we are in June, and we've helped somebody out. So January, we're thanking and we're congratulating, and in February, we're sitting and watching new breeds and we're learning, and in March, we're putting down the bleeping phone. And in April, what did we do in April? Oh, in April, we went out and we found a show chair and said nice things about their show. And then in May, we helped them with their show in some way. Even if you just pick up somebody's <clears throat> dog pile that they left behind. Okay. And in June, we helped a kid that needed a hand. Even if it was just getting a, getting a little better control of a dog. So now we're in July. We're in the hot, hot dog days of summer. We're going to organize a potluck. Yeah, buddy. You can do it at your grooming setup. You can do it at your RV. You can do it. You can talk to the club and organize a huge one for everybody. Whatever you want to do. Get a whole bunch of people together and invite people you don't know. <laughs> and just sit down and, as they say, break bread. This is a thing. Just hanging out, laughing, laughing at yourself better than laughing at others. Just going to, you know, word of the wise. Um, tell some stories. Talk about dogs. I mean, dear God, talk about dogs. Ask about a breed and ask to learn. You know, ask everybody's favorite imaginary best in show lineup. Like, have conversations about dogs. Don't talk about who's <clears throat> zooming who. Nobody cares. And half the shit you think you know, you don't actually know. Or it's made up. Or it's lies. Or whatever. So don't talk about it. Talk about dogs. That's why you're there. Um, and have fun doing it. And if there's a water balloon fight, I, I can tell you from personal experience, that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> if it's hot and gross, there's nothing better than a good old-fashioned water balloon fight to just set everybody down a little bit. And remember here, once again, we're carrying all of these things forward. So in the potluck, there's no phone. <laughs> and you've sat and you've watched breeds each dog show you've gone to. So you have more dogs to talk about or ask questions about. Um, it, it's a lot easier. And because you've helped out a club and you've talked to some show chairs, probably it's going to be easier to, to incorporate a bigger group of people in this giant potluck that you're putting together. Some of the most fun memories I have from dog shows, going back to my childhood, for this sort of a, a summer dog show get together. And, you know, we had one for years in Canby and everybody would get together and we'd eat and there was anybody could come and there was a ton, a ton, a ton of food. Um, one couple of years in a row, one of the other handlers and I had a, a barbecue sauce competition and like this Bobby Flay throwdown and he's actually a professional chef and I'm just me. And, and so it was fun. I mean, it was fun. And that is what is missing in so much of our world in dogs today is the fun part. So bring it back. Have a potluck. So remember, bringing all of this forward, we're saying thank you and congratulations. And we're making new friends and we're learning about new breeds. And we've put our phone down. Just put the bleeping phone down. Right? We helped somebody. We volunteered. We complimented the club. All right. We've had a potluck. Heck, this is turning into a hell of a good year, right? All right. So now we're in August. Remember I said we we're going to get to this one. <clears throat> Read the standard for a breed that you don't know anything about. Remember back in February, we started going and watching rings about of other breeds other than our own, watching them from start to finish. Now, let's read the standard for those breeds. And maybe you read the standard of one that you watched along the way. So now as you're watching your different breeds than your own, you have a standard and you can apply it and see if you can see what the judges are judging on because now you have the standard. Keep reading those standards. When I was a kid, every time the Gazette would come out with I would the standard from top to bottom. <coughs> Didn't care. Didn't matter what breed it was. I just, 
ate that stuff up. And I think we lose so much of our childhood wonder, right? Um, as we get to be adults and dog shows are a place that we can kind of revive that if we choose to. So that's my suggestion. Uh, yes, Julie, you can get a larger copy of this image and okay, good. Thank you, Natalie, for telling her about that. Um, okay, here we go. We're moving on. We're in um, July. We're in August. We're watching our breeds now with an actual standard in our hands. So now we're in September and we're going to go back to school. It's back to school month, right? Go back to school in your own breed. There's a thing. Reread your breed standard. We're sorry to say, maybe read it for the first time. Um, memorize it. Commit the entire standard to memory so thoroughly that you can quote entire sections verbatim. I can do this in my breed. I can, because I'm now judging, I can do it in a few others, but my breed is probably the easiest. Um, the, uh, my favorite line in the standard, the dog must have correct coat to be of correct type. The breed's harsh, wiry coat is its most distinctive feature. Extreme and excessive grooming to present a dog artificial in appearance is to be severely penalized. I mean, you know, I can do this. Um, it's a good thing to do. And a lot of times when you haven't been reading the standard or you haven't read the standard or you've only glanced at it or you've only heard somebody else talking about it, go through and actually read the standard and then go grab one of your dogs, stack them up and go over them piece by piece according to that actual standard, not according to what's winning in the ring, not according to what the famous and fancy are doing, according to the actual standard. Now, famous and fancy may be matching the standard, hard to say, but until you read it and apply it to your own dogs, you can't say either. <laughs> so try to be objective. Try to not, try to step away. Pretend that your dog isn't yours. Pretend it's somebody else's. You're more than happy to tear everybody else's dogs apart. Do the same thing to yours. And then try and find its virtues using the standard. And don't make excuses about it was scared by a you know, tall guy with a baseball cap as to why it's backing away from the judge or whatever it is. Just see what's there. Understand what your dog is and isn't, or all of them, based on the actual written breed standard, which is what the judges are supposed to be judging to in the ring. Okay, now, January, gone all the way through carrying all of these forward. October. It's one of my very favorites. Take the skeletons out of your closet. Mm. Look at them in the cold light of day, whether as a breeder, a handler, an exhibitor, or a judge. Take a look at your past mistakes, acknowledge them, and then burn them at the stake. <laughs> right? If we go through life trying to uh, being mad about something we screwed up before or wishing we had done it better or wishing being mad at somebody else's mistake, all of those things, it doesn't do us any good. Phew, toss those out the window, move on, move forward. Uh, one of my favorite people in the world. And if you haven't listened to his podcast interview that I did with him, my friend, Jeff Heim, um, it's his favorite thing. Always just move forward. It's good advice. Okay. Still carrying it all forward, right? Still congratulating. We're still putting down the bleeping phone. We're still volunteering and helping people and complimenting show committees and all the rest of it. So now we're to November. Talk Turkey. Get off the bleeping internet. <laughs> 
get out of the Facebook chat groups um, and approach a more experienced person about a question in your breeding program or your grooming routine or your handling skill set or whatever it is. Talk to them IRL. <laughs> like really in person. Invite them to lunch or to have a drink after the show. Um, don't expect some kind of miraculous secrets, but give respect and acknowledge someone that's outside your comfort zone maybe. And I promise you, you will learn something new every day. And as I said, I wrote this before I started the podcast. And <laughs> I have to tell you, after 600 episodes of talking to a lot of very smart people, this is even more valuable than I believed it to be. Uh, part of why I wanted to do the podcast was to provide real accurate, knowledgeable information because I was so crazed by the keyboard warriors in the Facebook chat groups, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I don't think that those places have the answers. I think that the answers are available um, on the podcast or by talking to smart people. Um, so that's what I do on the podcast. There you go. Uh, anyway, so there you go. Talk turkey. Burn your skeletons at the stake. Go back to school in your own breed. Be nice. Volunteer. Help other people. Have a potluck. Congratulate people and mean it. Okay. We're almost through an entire year now, you guys. Ready? December. Give the gift of your time and your energy to a local animal shelter. Um, a rescue group, some other doggy emergency support system. Um, Fido, my friend Nancy Martin's Friends Involved Dog Outreach is a perfect example. Um, give back and give back in a way that isn't about um, glorifying yourself. Give back in a meaningful way to our community. Um, that is, that is something I do feel really strongly about. So there you go. Um, there's lots of subjects to discuss at dinner, Julie. Um, I, I do believe that we have reached a point, you know, everything old is new again. You know, that saying used to be that in polite society, um, you didn't discuss uh, politics or religion over dinner. Um, I, I think that's still it's back to being a really good idea. <laughs> um, I have found that to be true. Um, talk about travel, talk about places, talk about other interests besides dogs. Um, you find some really fascinating people at dog shows that have cool and interesting jobs. Um, there's lots of kids. They're, they're actual human children. Um, there's, there's lots to find out about people and lots to talk about. Dogs are what I like to talk about because I like dogs, but if, you know, talk about other stuff. That's okay. That's okay too. Um, I I'd say avoid politics and religion. That's a lot safer these days. Um, otherwise, yeah, just, um, I think that building relationships and building community is one of the things that we do less well now in dogs than we did in the past. And it's one of the things that I really like about the patrons group is that I have been able to build that community um, uh, with the people there. And that was my puppy just coming in that um, had to go to the vet. So yeah, he's back and that's good. Um, yeah, right, Julie, definitely neither of those. Um, okay, questions, ideas. Um, I, you know, here's Robin just suggested something that I think is really important. We talk, a lot of people talk about, you know, like the drive through dog show, right? Like I show, I go, I'm done. You can't learn anything if you show up for the five minutes it takes you to get reserved and you leave. Nothing, not a thing. So hang out for a while, plan it, make it a day trip. Um, and sit a, if you're sitting there watching other rings, you might find somebody that needs a help, needs a hand, needs help. 
getting dogs in and out of the ring, right? Like this is, this is a thing that, um, I know I was, my baby was having a rough day. Um, so that's, that's something that I think is really important. The more dogs you show, the better you get at showing your own dogs. And that's something that I know to be the case, having been a professional handler, but watching um, the assistants or juniors or other kids, the more dogs you can show, the more times you run around the ring, the better you're going to be no matter what. So, um, all right. Other questions, comments, input, suggestions, or ideas? What you got? What you got, folks? Can we add to our 12-step list? It's okay. It's okay that you're late. All right. All right, you guys, this is a very important one. I feel really strongly about it. It really is a useful tool. And I 1000% assure you, if you do these things, your life will be better than dogs. It just will. Um, uh, Ju uh, Natalie has dropped this a number of times, but just to remind you, you can receive an automatic drop of this particular infographic. Um, by coming here to the Facebook page and just dropping us a message on Pure Dog Talk that says 12 steps, please. And, um, oh, Marty, I think that's a great one. Go to other events, um, like performance events, to see structure with form. That's a really, really good one. Um, I really, <sighs> apparently riot going on in my dog room next door. Um, I love that. I, I have spent a lot of years at uh, field events for my breeds, um, pointing breeds, spaniels, retrievers, all of them. And it really does give you a very, very different understanding of structure and um, why the standard for your breed is what it is. And it's because of what they do. And so that I think is a super great, super great thing. Um, I, yeah, I, there's events that I would like to go to. I'm thinking about, um, like some of the herding trials and, um, some of the earth dog events that I've never gotten to watch. And so, you know, if you see something that's happening near you, I, go watch. It's a cool thing to do. Yes. Oh, I like that. Renee, that is a great one. Try something new with your dog bonus. If your breed isn't known for it. So I, one of my favorite interviews I did was with a gal who does really high level competitive obedience with her Scottish deer hound. Like, whoa, that takes, that takes some mad skill is what I'm saying. Um, and a hundred percent, like I am so excited for this year. I'm trying to like do a few less things because I really want to try scent work with my dogs. Um, because I think particularly wire hairs would be ridiculously good at it. Um, Yep. Watch, watch and see and do. Um, and one of the things I used to tell my assistants, it was actually part of our, um, part of their job is we would get to the end of the day or we'd have a break and I would assign them a professional handler. And if it was a girl, I'd usually send them to watch a woman and a boy, I'd send them to watch a man, but I would assign them a professional handler that I knew to go stock, literally stock them at the ring and watch every single dog they showed. And everything from, you know, one of my very favorite people to watch for years was, has been Taffy McFadden and watching her show everything from the Bedlington to the giant schnauzer, to the deer hound, to the Havanese and, and just random class dogs, right? I, I, watch gifted people. The more you watch, the more you learn hundred percent. Oh my gosh. Hurting with your terrier, Julie, that's that's impressive. And it, it's not eating the sheep. I'm super impressed. <laughs> but this is the kind of thing. I mean, all this stuff. I had a client that did herding with her Rhodesian Ridgeback. I'm like, hey, I think it's amazing. So yes, this is this is good, good stuff. And I really appreciate all of you guys dropping by. And I really want you to take this and and print it out and tape it up on your tack box 
and I'll see you at a ring around along the way. Okay. And uh, I'll be the one with a copy of a breed standard in my hand. How's that sound? All right. Thank you all. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity yet, please do take a minute to join our patrons group. If you're looking for community, it is one of the best in the business. And I mean that sincerely. We, we get together for after dark conversations once a month and we support each other at shows and it's really a great group of people. So that's my pitch for where you can build community, where you can have a good time. We frequently have food and drink. So <laughs> um, join us. We'd be happy to have you. All right. With that, have a great night. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Welcome 2024. Let's do it right, y'all. All right. Peace out.